Hello and welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Mysteries at the End of the World. I apologize for my audio the past two sessions of recording this. I hadn't worked out all the kinks with my Scarlet Focus right, and now it's all fixed. So uh, we'll blame uh, Heather for any audio weirdness on my part, because she's the audio tech and um, an NPC. So <laughs> we're going to go around. We're going to say who we are and who we're playing. Uh, I, of course, am the Keeper of Arcane Lore, but beneath me we have... Tom, Tom, how are you today? You leave Heather alone. This <laughs> adorable character there is. Um, I'm good. I'm okay, thank you. Uh, it was a bit of a stressful day, but uh, apart from that, pretty good. Pretty excited to uh, continue on. <clears throat> go into a volcanic island. Nothing could possibly go wrong there. In a very old 1930s, 40s? 30s. 1933, 30s, 1930s. Junkers W34. There Brand we go. new for the time. Yeah, in when yep, and we're in built. the eighties. So, yeah, you know, that's yeah. um, yeah, fifty-year-old play. Fifty-three-year-old play. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, nothing can go wrong. Nothing can go wrong. No, well, I mean, you already had like your mechanic look over it. Uh, speaking exactly. of which, <laughs> we've got Greg. Greg, how are you tonight? Oh, I'm doing well. Uh, my name's Greg, uh, Grimjack21502. I'll be playing Uriah Pendergast, engineer extraordinaire. Uh, and I'm, if we're having a death pool, I'm going to go with first to die. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm betting on myself. That's what they say to do. So I'm betting on myself. Okay, cool, cool. Um, someone who bets on Coca-Cola is Don. Don, how are you today? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Uh, I'm Don. I play Tanner Huntington. Uh, he is a, a journeyman cameraman uh, on an expedition, and he's terrified often, and I'm looking forward to being terrified again today. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And of course, last but certainly not least, Ruit. Hey, how's it going there, Lindy? I am Pruitt. Uh, I'll be playing Wash Keys today. And I just wanted to go ahead and second Tom's uh, calls of, uh, can we please not blame Heather? She's just doing the best she can. In fact, I want to start a Heather fan club called Birds of a Heather. If you want to join, <laughs> just hit me up. Back to you, Lindy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to keep that in mind. Um... Thank you. You all are beautiful, wonderful people. Uh, so last time on Mysteries at the End of the World, uh, our group was investigating uh, Laguna Esmeralda, a very beautiful, scenic mountain vista-y lake with nothing at all out of the ordinary about it. But maybe just, just a little something out of the ordinary. There might be like a weird, exactly circular s circle of black sand that reacts differently than normal sand at the bottom of the lake that Tanner wanted to swim into because he felt like a deep pull. Thankfully, he got snapped out of it, though, and, you know, nothing awful happened. Uh, but they did find some little artifacts and things and uh, examined them and was like, wow, what, what... I think our professor was quite flabbergasted with the cultural finds that we got from just this lake alone. I only, can only imagine how many more he will continue to find. Do you continue this little exploration of Tierra del Fuego. Um, and, uh, you know, then uh, Tanner and Heather watched A New Hope, Star Wars, because uh, Das Boot was checked out, uh, had a nice little, had a bunch of snacks, had a nice little movie night, uh, you know, Wash got to flex his diving expertise muscles, and Uriah uh, did some just casual investigating, found an old, not that old, pack of, uh, kind of investigative equipment archaeological stuff as well. Wasn't theirs. Weird. Kind of weird. Um, also noticed that the train station didn't seem to be as unoperational as the locals claim. But whatever, because, you know, the next day, they're going to Fuenguino, the volcano uh, that is right off the tip, or at one of the islands on Cook Island, uh, which is technically in Chile. But, you know, your producer worked something out with the totally not shady dock master on Ushuaia. And got you all some papers, so if, if, you run into any Chilean authorities, it should be fine. Um, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and, uh, they got on a seaplane, well, converted seaplane, uh, beautiful Junkers 34, 
uh, from 1933, piloted by its original pilot, yeah, Johann Hertz, um, who was, uh, might be German, um, and the name of the, the, the plane is, is Die Frau, um, and, uh, it may have had a fuel line issue, which Uriah fixed before going out, so that's good, you didn't get there and have not have enough fuel to go back so you know it's let's look on the bright side of life and as we do that um we're gonna be on the plane uh, um, i bet we'll make me spot hidden checks while on the plane I still, I still remember um greg actually uh your eye was going around doing the rumor that tanner actually killed people <laughs> Oh yeah, that happened. that happened too. Always look on uh -uh. the bright side of life. <clears throat> okay. There we go. I am ready. So, your pilot succeeded in taking off. Can I get you all to roll me a spot hidden check while on the plane? Beautiful. Oh, dang, Tanner. Ooh. Extreme success. Wash, it's just real pretty scenery out there, you know? I'm, uh, I'm over there um, same for you, Uriah. appropriating the, the papers that they gave us. <clears throat> They're super legit. I mean, they roll well, so yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty legit. <laughs> Apparently I'm helping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we don't have any regular successes. Straight to the hards and extremes. I'm here for this. So, we'll go with Professor first. Professor, you're looking around out this totally safe plane. Um, and uh, it's it's got beautiful scenery out here. You see a, a lot of little island chains. And you notice that, uh, you know, the ocean, it's, it's very oceany today. Uh, there's several fishing vessels you see as you leave Ushuaia. Um, it, a lot of times there's like some space between them. There's not as much space as you would expect between these fishing vessels. Um, a lot of them are in kind of littler clusters, which for certain types of fishing checks out, but it's not super common. Um, you don't see any little lone shipping, uh, fishing vessels or big spaces between them. Um, which is, which is a little odd, but, you know, because you've seen a lot of fishing vessels coming in and out from Boston. <laughs> and, uh, let's see, what else do you see? Um, some interesting bubbles coming up from the ocean every now and then. Just a little, little, boop. It's probably some whales or something in the area. You know that there's, it's, there's some good whale populations down here. Probably nothing to worry about, but they do seem... Surprisingly regular, and you don't see any whales come up or air, okay. which is interesting. Um, Tanner, you got an extreme success. So as we're flying out, you see the same thing the professor does. You're like, oh, that's kind of weird. And uh, your director asks you to like have the camera rolling for some good aerial footage, you know? I think he probably is like gripping the camera. It has to be strapped <laughs> if they're flying, right? Mm -hmm. So he's gripping the camera like a safety blanket trying to get shaky, whatever he can. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to try to stabilize some of that footage. It's fine. Um, but as you're looking through, do you look through the camera at all, or are you just, like, looking out the window and, like, holding the ca camera? The windows are huge, you know, so. Yeah, he's looking through the camera. Okay, cool, cool, cool. As you're looking through the camera with your extreme success, you see, as you get closer to Fuinguino, Kind of an interesting swirling effect in some of the areas of the ocean. Kind of, kind of reminds you of that black sand a little bit, but you only see it when you look through the camera lens. Like a couple of times, is it? Uh, is the water discolored? Were the swirls happening? A little bit, a little bit, and it it just kind of seems to pulse a little bit. Like it'll be like a. 
I think as the plane is moving, you know, if it turns a little bit and whatnot, like he has to shift and, mm -hmm. and try to find a different angle through the window to, to keep on it. And he keeps losing it and coming back to it, losing it and coming back mm -hmm. to it. I think he probably trips once uh, and kind of falls down to a knee and then he picks back up and mm -hmm. tries to hold the camera to the window. Yeah. yeah. He probably looks a little manic. Mm, sure, sure. Um... You get you get over and you see like the fishing boats kind of stop at some point. It takes about forty. It's about a forty minute hour, forty minute plane flight. I think it's I think actually it's about forty minutes. So it's not that long. So you get near there and then and the pilot's nice. He does a like he does like a little loop around the Fuinguino so you can get some good aerial footage of the uh, volcano, which is quite beautiful. Um, it's covered in some trees and vegetation. It's got a little crater at the top filled with water almost like a little lake or pond and then another little lake at the base and then a nice bay and the pilot goes we are going to be landing in the bay there um, you didn't want me to circle around again or for you to land and her checks the you know the camera and thinks about how much footage he can get today and how they're not even at the volcano yet and you've got a few extra he, like reels like the big heavy like lead cases almost just to keep mm -hmm. them hopefully watertight should the worst happen yeah uh he sits back down straps back in and lowers the camera uh and he kind of snaps out of thinking about that swirl mm -hmm. and says uh no I, th I think i'm good um uh, if you're all good I i'm ready to go on all right uh, make sure you're buckled we're going to be landing I'm sorry, it's landing this way, I think. Anyways, I'm not a pilot. My husband is. Um, so we're going to roll to see what her heart gets for landing. Oops, if I don't accidentally exit roll time. There we go. These sleeves are too big. And heavy. Oh! It is a surprisingly smooth seaplane landing. Um, and he, and he does like that little circle he did for you to get the tight shot. Then he does another bigger circle, kind of like, look, like looking at the winds, looking at like the way the waves are going. Um, you actually see a little fishing vessel, like a, like a Chilean fishing vessel. Cause you can see that the flag's different from the Argentina ones you saw. This one is by itself and it's, you can see, you'll be able to see it from the volcano. It's, it looks like they're bringing in a good haul. He flies a little low to it and smooth. As smooth a seaplane landing as can be had, practically. And he goes, ah, yeah, that was a good one. All right, Sam. And then, yeah, you know, kind of like propellers uh, once you land in to get close to the shore. He goes, all right, um, let me know when you want to fly off again. Um, me and my co-pilot will stay with the plane here. It sure doesn't, you know, drift off or anything. Um, and, um, just need about 20 minutes to get it all up and going again, so. Have fun. Uh, um, th thank you, thank you. That was the smoothest, um, uh, ride I've, I've had. Even smoother than the car ride, I think. Uh, thank you. Yeah. He immediately yeah, just the, lights for, up a big old cigar and like just kicks back. <laughs> yeah, from the pilots, I have to say that was uh, was top notch work. Okay. Tanner, you need this, buddy. Look a little pale. Oh, uh, <clears throat> no, 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 I'm I'm fine. Thanks, Wash. Told you, I've been flying for years. Mm-hmm. I guess we head off the plane and get everything unpacked yeah. and ready. So where exactly are we going to search for artifacts? Are we doing it in the lake at the bottom, at the top, both? I mean... So that's kind of up to you guys. Um, though, uh, producer Walter Thomas definitely... <laughs> Wants... Is he here with us? <laughs> yes. So the okay. uh, Junkers W34 fits a pilot, a co-pilot, and six passengers. So it is U4 plus the the director, um, Danny, and uh, you know the others. 
had some other things they wanted to set up for later, because, you know, this is early in the morning, early enough in the morning, you can probably get back by the afternoon and do some more filming and stuff, so. This is really dirty. Um, so yeah. We're basically told to be back, like, after lunch. Okay. Um, so in that case, then, because I'm looking for artifacts, and... Would I know, because I, uh, knowing I went to this island, I might have tried to read up on it. And sure, you can give I, me a, I, a library use check. Library use? Yeah. Um, I essentially want to know the best place would to find artifacts. So, for example, if there was, like, um, an ancient village or town... Oh, sure, sure, sure. Was, like, near the lake at the bottom, there's no point in searching the lake at the top. Um, however, if this was a thing that used the volcano for potential sacrifice in the past, then there might be you better stuff You did find that little top. mural. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll do a library use to see where potentially what? the juicy stuff is. 26. Hard success. Hard success. So you think that based on this island, it is a small island, but you do know that uh, the Selknam uh, were scattered throughout the islands of Tierra del Fuego. So it is entirely possible that um, they probably had a settlement on the little inland lake because you do know it is a freshwater lake rather mm -hmm. than the saltwater surrounding it. So this would be a very good place to have had a a little, little place. And also mm -hmm. uh, the crater at the top would also probably have, you do see like a trail but you, that is visible to this day. It's not well traveled, but there is a trail that goes from the little lake at the bottom up to the top one using probably the path of least resistance around it. It has a couple switchbacks and things. Are there any like locals on the island or is it just us for now? Just you guys. It is a, It is at the mo at currently in modern day, it is an uninhabited island because it is not very big. Um, mm -hmm. It would have, until, you know, smallpox came around, it would have been inhabited by small communities. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, um, director, um, I believe yeah. that, uh, we have two potential locations. It depends on what you want to do. We, there are reports of um, potentially a, a, a small village next to the lake at the foot of the volcano, which could be ripe for um, some discoveries there. Yep. However, mm -hmm. we must also not forget the religious significance of the volcano, where that they would sacrifice to their god at the top. So people would have been yeah. thrown in, perhaps very valuable kind of, um, you know, like uh, uh, tokens and stuff could yeah. also have been thrown in well, uh, to the volcano. People being the eaten it into a volcano makes better television. So maybe we'll start at the top and then work our way down. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, sh sh uh, he looks at the the, <laughs> the 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 mountain. How tall is this? What is this a tall it's, volcano? It's not super tall. Um, it's because it is part of an island. You're guessing the yeah. bulk of it is below the mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just the peak. You could probably get up there in about thirty five minutes. Oh, okay. Is it a steep climb or is it gentle kind of? Um, you. It's like stairs. It's gonna be. Oh, okay. okay. Like going upstairs. So, no, like somewhere in between. Climbing gear. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's yeah. it's not the worst, but it's not like oh, this is a cakewalk, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was yeah. worried because you know, like I got all this kit that I want to mm -hmm. <laughs> bring up. Not yeah. to mention the diving gear as well, the tanks and everything. It's a lot. It's a lot. Shame we didn't hire anyone to come with us. Um, There's only anyway. six seats on the plane, you had a bunch of equipment, so... I mean, we could always hail down one of the fishermen and pay them to help us do it. You wanna, t you wanna swim to that boat and ask them? Um... Uh, I can try and wave them down. Does anyone here speak the language? Spanish. I mean, yeah. I know enough Spanish to get slapped. So maybe... I mean, I don't think Maybe we work. could do it. Because imagine trying to get a fisherman and say, we will pay you to take us up the volcano. It's not really, it's hard to... I guess we'll do it ourselves then, I guess. I I, I mean, if you think it's safe to go talk to him, uh, I speak pretty passively. I, I mean... We need an active speaker, Tanner. You gotta take command, okay? Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can do that. I, I, I can do that. I believe in you. I mean, um, with a few, with enough money, I, I, I guess anyone will really 
We are on a budget. Oh. Um, how much? If you want to pay the guy, that's fine. I mean, I, I guess I could pay them for the uh, extra hands to get... Yes, you know what? I think I'll pay them. Yes, yes. I've got. They probably have a radio if you want to use the seaplane's radio to, to talk to him or whatever. Uh, sure, sure. Yes. Um. Um. Uh, uh, Tanner, if if, if you want to come with me, we'll we'll see if uh, uh, Mister, uh, Mister Hertz. Hertz does it. Mister Hertz will um uh, let us <laughs> use the uh, channel. Lindy, for shits and giggles, um, is it possible? Or the plane to land in the lake of the volcano? No. Um, I, I looked into the logistics and I did a lot of research on seaplanes. And the answer is, you don't want to try it. If you value your uh, lives. I definitely do, <laughs> but we won't. Right. <laughs> I mean, is it gonna... In a worst case scenario, you might not die, but the plane probably wouldn't be salvageable. <laughs> so we would die, just take a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's enough trees you could make a boat, a raft, yeah, yeah. And a coconut, and a handprint on it. There's no coconuts Tanner. here. I'm kidding. Sorry. It's too cold. Tan too cold for coconuts. Tanner. Sorry. <laughs> Tanner will grab his camera and uh, he, he'll kind of start setting it up as he moves to follow the professor. And he'll say, yeah, 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 sure. And, and this is good. Anyways, I, I need to uh, just get you on camera, ask a few questions anyhow. Oh, 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 well, let me know when you're rolling so I can, uh, uh, we'll get this sorted and then we can do it afterwards. Um, uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Hertz? Uh, yeah? Uh, um, uh, sorry to uh, bother you. Could we possibly you use your to go already? Oh, no, 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 radio. Enjoy your cigar. Enjoy your cigar. Um, uh, could we borrow your radio to communicate with the fishing boat over there? Uh, you yeah. see, we we need um people to help us carry the equipment up. Unless you want to do it, you know, to the top of the volcano. Nine. Okay, they didn't think so. that's fine. That's fine. Um, the, the fishermen will probably be cheaper anyway. Um, so um, my rates are very. I mean, they are good for the area, but they are not. I mean, is that is that like nine a day, nine an hour? Uh, n No. That's correct. Yes. Well, what is no. it? It's not. Uh, and it just is like it just ignores you. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom's audio continues to pull diving gear out of the plane. Um. Right. So Tanner, uh, do you? By the way, uh, do you speak Spanish? Sí. Oh. I, I mean, both between you two should be able to sort it out. Yeah. No, let Tanner do it. Let Tanner do it. It's more fun this way. Uh, oh, we're not yeah. know what you are trying to achieve, so yeah. Um, so that's radio here. And, he, and you mm. see all of the controls are in German. Um, so he's yeah. like, this is to scan the channels, this is, and he just goes over everything, like, this is how to use the radio. Um, which is not a bad thing to know how to use. <laughs> yeah. Place. On the plane, he goes, all right, so that's how you use it. I will be supervising to make sure you don't break anything. Knock yourself oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, he's scanning over the controls. He doesn't speak German, but, he, you know, he thinks he has it or will try. Yeah, he, he went over it with you. There's a couple things he was like, ah, and then went for the Spanish word, since you apparently speak Spanish as well. He's had to learn it from living in the You'll area for the past 50 years. He'll, he'll scan the channels and try to see if he can contact the fishermen um, as well yeah. as he can. You're scanning the channels. Um, you definitely, you find it, but before that you find like just a really like tango channel. It's like, da, 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 da. and then it, but it's, but it's kind of cutting in and out. And then you get like the, the, what you think is like the, the broadband channel that the fishermen would use. Make a note of that previous channel. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Writes it down. Writes it says, down. Oh, all right, uh, Professor. So, um, what exactly do you want me to say? Is there uh, a certain amount of money that you're offering? Um, uh, I, I don't know. What, uh, how, um, I don't know how much money it would be good. I've got a bit of money on me. Um, so just offer that um, if they're interested in additional work, as um, uh, just um, carrying things for us, it would only take a, bit, a few hours. That extra money right. for them. Um, 
Okay, uh, he clicks on the radio uh, and begins speaking in pretty passable Spanish, uh, which mm-hmm. I cannot do. I can't either. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he says, uh, hello, this is Tanner Huntington. I'm with a, an American, mostly American expedition. Uh, we are up here near the volcano and we are looking to hire some local workers to help us carry some of our equipment. And the pay is very good. It should only last a couple of hours. So uh, does anybody hear me? Anybody, anybody out there? Oh yeah, si senor, how are you doing? I, I'm I'm good, uh, thank you. And he kind of gives a, a kind of a cautious glance back to the professor. He says, uh, who, who am I speaking with? Oh, the captain of the uh, stinky fish. No, uh, <laughs> b- uh captain. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> we uh, we should just need. Well, uh, we've got some diving equipment that we're carrying up, some camera equipment, uh, personal equipment as well for the professor here who's with us. And uh, I think maybe if we could get half a dozen people, we could pay him today. Oh, you so you're paying money, you're paying American money. Uh, that that's right. And he gives another cautious look back to the professor, and then says, "And we're paying American wages too." Oh well, unfortunately, we are, there's only about half a dozen of us total on this boat, but uh, you know, and we have a contract to fulfill, but. Mateo, Mateo here. He just is just his wife just had a baby. You could use the extra money. We could send Mateo over to help. All right, yeah, yeah. That that any help would be excellent. If you know anyone else who's looking for, uh, oh, that's an easy job. That's yeah, yeah. And can I? Can I? And he leans in a little closer to the radio. Can, can I ask you a question, Captain? Ah, uh, si, senor. Uh, we're flying overhead before we landed. I was uh, just uh, getting some footage of my cameraman, and uh, I found a strange sort of effect in the sea. Is like uh, almost like a whirlpool, but not a whirlpool. Swirling, the color of the water there was a little bit darker, and uh, I couldn't. It seemed inconsistent what I was seeing. Um, we're here, uh, just you know, trying to learn what we can about the area. Is there anything you know about that? Is that a common phenomenon out here? Uh, no, no, I don't really, no, no whirlpools. We don't really have those in the area. But uh, there have been some rumors about, about a bunch of uh, Argentina boats going missing lately. Yeah, Argentina, uh, Argentina fishing boats? Yeah, or? Fishing, all sorts of boats. Mostly fishing vessels, though. That's that's good to know. Uh, hey, um, M- Mateo, um, are they familiar with the area? Have they been here? Oh before? yeah, Mateo. Mateo's grown up here. He's been fishing for years. All right. Um, great. Oh, uh, he gives the position as well as he can of mm-hmm. where their plane has landed. Yeah, I think we see it uh, in the distance. You can you can kind of see the boat in the distance. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Well, we'll head over that way. It's about lunch break anyway. The- that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and he speaks in English. Professor, uh, they're going to send over uh, at least one helper. His name is Mateo. They know the oh. area. Um, is there anything else you want me to ask him? No, oh, I, 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 I don't think so. Uh, uh, nope. All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, good day. Good fishing. And I uh, really appreciate your help. No, go, of course, of course, course. See you soon. And uh, you hear like the radio crackle. Well, an extra hand, a pair of hands is always good. They said something about some mission, missing fishing boats, Argentinian fishing boats, recently around here. I was thinking if we have a, you know, a guide who's a local, that they might know some local stories, legends. Mm. Yeah, the fishing boats have been going missing for the past uh, three or four months. Yeah. Um, what? Hang on. Is it 1983? 1986. Oh, that's all right then. 
it's going to be just dangerous <laughs> no, no. and close to the fuck <laughs> We are. We are a little bit. This you, you, The professor has gotten some dirty looks if he speaks with his accent right. around uh, town a little bit. Right. Um, right. Just, you know, missing fishing boats, you know? Oh, no, I love you. <laughs> No, but the, okay. yeah, it's weird. It's not even the Falklands War, and there's some fishing boats going missing. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, I, bad, I don't know. Bad weather. I, I'm afraid the ocean isn't really my kind of thing. Maybe Wash knows. He's he's a pilot. Maybe he'll know about the currents of the ocean and what can drag yeah, something planes, down. I just hear what they say at the docks because the seaplane is parked there. Mine for all. So you, they don't say anything to you? Yeah, they, you know, when they need to see planes, they, they hire us. Keep to ourselves, I... mostly. Oh, I, I see. I see. <laughs> Sorry. Well, uh... <laughs> Looked at Greg and I couldn't help it. Tanner's obviously like feels uncomfortable anytime he's around this pilot. He shifts, <laughs> uh, doesn't really make direct eye contact. He looks mm -hmm. down at his camera and kind of you know fixes the roll and uh, says, mm -hmm. "I was going to uh, say, do you, you want to do the interview now?" Yeah, yeah. If you want, we can do it while we're walking back. Okay, I I, I can do that. He's like, and he, <clears throat> he starts walking next to you. He's like, getting into character. Even jumps up, he just rolls on the balls of his shoes and he starts shaking himself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and please, you know, the, the more uh, natural this is, Professor, the better. You know, we'll get it while we're walking. So it's this nice action shot. We'll get some scenery in the background. And, and you really just, just be yourself, you know. I think that's going to be most compelling to people and whatever we do find, you know, it's going to feel more legitimate if they don't feel like you're putting on airs. My, myself. Um, uh, okay. Okay. I, 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 I can do that. Um, so, well, uh, ask away. What, what, what do you? All right. The, gets the camera rolling uh, and kind of follows the professor as they're walking. Uh, can you go ahead and just uh, introduce yourself, state your name, and who, who you are once more? Um, yes, sure. Uh, my name is Professor Marvin Howells. I'm a professor of MIT um, uh, in Boston. Um, I'm here as a archaeologist and an anthropologist and potentially a geologist, too, depending on what we find. It's a, it's a large resume, uh, Professor. Um, and of course, you know, you're very well studied uh, and very successful yeah. i want to ask uh, beyond you know at the academic in your time at mit uh, are you used to trekking through nature hiking camping do you have any other hobbies things that inspire you beyond the academic well i uh, I, I do like my sunday walk um but that's pretty much the extent of my hiking um I, I i used to, to to you know in my youth i used to hike in the in the brecon beacons of wales but um not 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 for some quite some time now I, with at my stage of life it gets a little harder to walk so much i'm a little um i might be exhausted when i get to the top of this but i'll be fine i'm i'm, I'm quite spry for for my age um so i'll be fine um, it, it, uh, hobbies, um, I mean, uh, you don't really get to be a professor of all those things and, and not dedicate your life to those things. Uh, my hobby is education, I guess, teaching people, finding new things myself. That is what I do. Great, and today up here... Uh top of this volcano, this lake. Mm -hmm. What is it exactly that you're hoping to find, Professor? Well, he gets really excited. He kind of like, oh, you know, like, oh, there was a nervousness with him, with him ha ring ringing his hands when you told him to be normal, you know, to be himself. He's a bit nervous in front of the camera, not this facade. But the second he goes, well, um, 
Oh, well, this uh, this could be some significant findings. Um, I was quite excited of what we found um, back at the previous site, uh, 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 that lake. Uh, but this one is a bit more isolated, so it could be more preserved, you see, so, so less contamination from external factors. Uh, so um, the one around the lake may be a bit more for... Um, normal lifestyle of the villagers here, you know, like tools and stuff. The really good stuff might be at the very top of the volcano because that's where they would dedicate their things to their god. You see, so they get the best that they could possibly think and, and then they would put that in the volcano as a dedication. And you don't put any old, um, um, like, a, a tat or anything in this volcano. It has to be one of the purest. And if we can find something truly remarkable and unique, uh, that is quite exciting. For, for, for myself and, 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 and the world, really. He nods, uh, checks the camera, and then he doesn't say anything for a moment. And then he turns the camera back to you. He stops and just holds his position. Even if you keep walking, he just stays there, camera locked on you, and says, and Professor, as a learned man, an educated man, do you believe in the supernatural, the unexplainable forces beyond uh, our ability to see in this world, things that move beneath and through. And at this point, he would have carried on walking as he was looking around, and then as he turns and looks and he looks back, he goes, supernatural? Um, uh, I mean, there hasn't been any proof of such things. Um... It is recorded in history that some of the more uh, older civilizations um, kind of believed in it. But myself, I, I don't know. I, I'm a man of science and, and, and things that I can, you know, be proven the real. I mean, something that is unexplained is just something that hasn't been explained yet. We just haven't found why it is. Um, there are many things like that. Um, so... Um, I, I, I don't believe in the unexplainable, no. It's just that we haven't found the answer yet. And and supernatural things, I feel, uh, always have a, a logical reason for it. He's silent for another long few moments, and then he suddenly stops the camera. He flashes you a smile as he lowers it. That's great, Professor. Thank you. That'll be really good. Oh, ah, ah, totally good. Um, uh, brilliant. Well, uh, you better head back. And uh, to help with the uh, with all the uh, goods. Oh, this is going to be very exciting. Yeah, uh, I hope it's so. By this point, uh, Wash has unloaded most of the scuba gear and stuff, um, and the stinky fish uh, pulls into harbor, and uh, you see, like, I, once they get to you know shallow enough, a, a guy jumps off, yeah, swims to shore a bit, comes out, um. Actually, no, the water's pretty cold. He wouldn't swim. They, 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 they'd, like, give him, like, the little, little inflatable boat, the little, the little boat, and, like, he'd throw it to shore. And then, uh, be like, uh, um, you see this very good-looking Chilean guy with, like, broad shoulders, long, like, hair, um... Very, very tan from working on the water. And he goes, Ah, uh, hi, I have the best English. I'm Mateo. I'm going to be, you're going to be paying me to move things today? Mateo, let me tell you something about what you're going to be moving. It's All mostly right. going to be this right here, but hopefully it'll be this right here. And he like reaches out for like a handshake. No, no, no. And and Wash and, comes in and gives him a hug. Okay. He'll... <clears throat> the, yeah. Like, all right, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's get this on the road. But, but, but truly, it'll be mostly this right here. If you uh, could just... He just starts, like, lifting up things and put them on uh, pretty deftly. Like, he, like, manages to, like, tie it all kind of together so that it's a lot easier to carry. Um, mm -hmm. And you guys are going to be able to get it up in one trip instead of two. Um... So, with Mateo's help, and then the boat goes back out, like, we'll come back for lunch! Uh, he goes out, and 
They go out, you guys go start working your way up uh, Fuenguino. And uh, you get up there, and again, very scenic out here. It is just beautiful. You get to the top, and you see the the waters. Uh, it's it's not as waves. It's pretty still up here, but based on the fact that you've got the crater kind of giving, like, preventing the wind from coming in and blowing quite as much. Um, and you actually see a woman um, at the at the edge of the water up there. You you couldn't quite see her from the air because you know it's just one person. And she's kind of like where any where, where some trees are, and you see like a little tent set up, and um, yeah, you see you see a, I see a woman there. She's like got like a little, little vial, like, like checking some samples. She's got like a notebook. What the, um, what does she look like? She is wearing um. Kind of just basic clothes, like some cargo pants. She's got um, like a, a button-up shirt with like a jacket over it, and like a hat, um, like, kind of like a beanie, kind of rolled back. She's got a, looks like several notebooks along the shore, um, lots of scientific-looking equipment um, with her. Looks like it, it's all like able to like if you wanted to load up one of those really heavy hefty backpacks yeah. and maybe like a like a like a duffel as well it could all fit into there but it's like a travel science little lab she's got right here. We didn't see another boat on the island. You did didn't. We? Oh. Um. Well, I, I guess we better go into. She hasn't seemed to ourselves. notice you because she's very like. Mm-hmm. And he'll kind of, um, he'll look at all the others and wait to see if someone else is going to go introduce themselves. Yeah, Uriah <laughs> like no walk in. Did. Yeah, yeah there there is. <laughs> all right, so Uriah what? makes himself known. He, he he steps in and makes, he doesn't like stealth up to the scientist. But um, he also keeps his oh. eyes on Mateo the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, Mateo, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Very quick swap. Very easy. He's just like, after, you know, like setting down all the gear, just a great view up here. Yeah. Seems pretty, like, chill, unbothered. Speaking of a great view, do we see anything, like, I don't know, approaching boats from the authorities or anything like that? <laughs> um,. It's hard to tell from inside the crater, but you could give me a spot hidden check if you want from uh, what before you cross over. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why not? Go for it. Yeah. Just because it's on my mind. There we go. Extreme success. You don't see any boats from the authorities. Um, actually, at the moment, it's just just the seaplane kind of bobbing in the harbor, the little little raft that Mateo used, and then you know, like uh, the fish, the stinky fish going back out to. To see a little bit to do some fishing. You see, like, uh, with your extreme, you see, like, the net getting cast out. And, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Yeah, so he, he would walk in and he would say, I'm sorry to bother you. With oh, your... gosh. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. Excuse me. I really wasn't expecting to see other people up here. Um, nor, nor were we without a boat down there. That was surprising. Yes. Oh, um, yes. I could see how that could be odd. Um, hi, my name is Dr. Renee Nelson. Um, I've been here for about uh, two weeks now. Um, supposed to be well, about Dr. Ten Nelson. Days. Yes, Dr. Dr. Renee Nelson. I am a, a climatologist. Oh, fantastic. Uh, we're going to be doing some diving here today. Is that all right? Oh, you might not want to do that. Okay, I'll bite. Why not? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> so many things. Uh, let me just set this down. Um, actually, no, that's still damn. Uh, so, Fuenguino right now has been showing some unusual activity. I'm not sure how long you've been in the area. Why do you have so many film cameras? Um, but the uh, there was an earthquake yesterday. Oh shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I don't know if you were aware. Um, I'm yeah, very, yeah. Um. Is, is so, that seismic activity related to the previously dormant volcano? <laughs> oh, seismic activity is always related to tectonic plates and fault lines, which 
volcanoes form on tectonic plates and fault lines. Uh, if you didn't know, um... Professor. <laughs> He would just wave yes. for the professor. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. This is this is you, and then he uh, walks off. Uh, uh, pleasure to meet you. I'm Professor Marvin Howells. Oh, hi, Professor Marvin Howells. I'm Doctor uh, Renee Nelson, a climatologist. Nelson. Uh, what? You said, yeah. Yeah, Nelson. Doctor Renee Nelson. Okay. Cool. Um, and then, uh, as you as you're introducing yourself, the producer. Is like uh, Tanner, Tanner, Tanner. Just start, just start. Swap over to a new roll of film and get all the nerd talk. We can edit out what we don't need later. Uh, no, do we no, we, we only have to, to sit through it once. Do we have to get her to sign something? I'll get it after. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Switches out the film. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going on in the background while you're you making your introductions. Okay. Um. um Sorry, um, so we're here for um, potentially an archaeological um, exploration and maybe geological uh, yes, as well. There um, is a lot of geological activity going on here right now. Really? Yes. Do you have any uh, samples or, or, you know, have you, have you kind of... Uh, well, any... let me tell you about what's been going on in this area. Uh, she looks really pleased that you seem to want to hear what she has to say. Um, genuinely fascinated. <laughs> like, like someone wants to hear my yeah. research. Yeah. Finally, and they have cameras. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, as I'm sure you're well aware, uh, Professor, global warming has been a very big issue um, lately. With what with the ozone layer and everything, um, and she like reaches like quickly like reaches out and hands you like some files. Oh. Um, so, um, I've been monitoring the area around Tierra del Fuego's temperature readings for quite some time. Um, it, in fact, at this very moment in time, the weather's about 10 degrees warmer than it should be based on the uh, averages uh, for the past uh, 80 to 100 years for the area. Um, so there's that, that's not enough of an indicator. Um, also, based on research started in the 1930s by uh, Miss Lois Greenaway uh, in Antarctica, uh, reported temperatures from boats going to and from there have also reported alarming levels of heating up at an, at an equally alarming rate. Um, now, to the seismic activity, the earthquakes. There was a very large earthquake back here in 1949. It was actually the most powerful ever recorded in uh, southern Argentina and um, Austral Chile. Um, and ever s and it's been very quiet up until the past year or so. Um, well, decade really, but it's really gotten heated up here recently. Um, there's been lots of little tremors, which is usually <laughs> not a problem except for their alarming regularity. If you'll see here on these seismographs that I have here, um, there's been uh, increased activity with, with somewhat regularity. I found that it actually kind of corresponds to the lunar cycles of the area, um, which is just not normal for tectonic plate activity. Um, in addition to that, um, just touch the water there for me, would you? He puts his finger in the water. It's warm. Would this dormant volcano be reawakening? That is my theory. In fact, <clears throat> uh, there has been an increase globally of volcanic activity in the last several years. Um, I mean, starting since really 1800, there has been, uh, when the Industrial Revolution, you know, was like 1800s when the Industrial uh, yes. Revolution was in full force, yeah. therefore yeah. increasing global warming, which is correlated to, I believe directly, the increased uh, volcanic activity. Um, a big jump again in the 1950s after, you know, all the, the wars and such, also contributing all that extra industry. 
Right. There's clearly right. signs of greenhouse gases and global warming. Um, though this volcano hasn't erupted since the 1920s, more than 70% of all volcanic activity happens underwater. So really, if there is a side vent to this volcano, um, it is entirely possible that it has had minor underwater eruptions, which has prevented a large, um, you know, dome eruption from happening. Mm. But um, just last November, uh, the Nevado del Ruiz volcano erupted, which was um, in Colombia. The worst natural disaster ever recorded in Colombia, by the way. Uh, the town of 3, 30,000 people underneath it. Yeah, only about 5,000 made it. It's kind of like the modern Pompeii of our time that nobody talks about because it's in South America. But anyways. <sighs> yes, I don't recommend diving here at the moment. Um, there's also been a... Um, the water temperature here isn't hasn't been constant. I've been here for about two weeks camping, and then I was here a few months ago as well um, to, again, monitor the volcano. And um, the water hasn't been this warm ever, and it always increases in temperature after an earthquake. What are the degrees of e increase? Are there increments? Well, the normal temperature of the water here is, you know, about hypothermia level, typical for the rest of the area. Mm -hmm. um, this feels like bath water. Um, so, you know, it's a little, it's not quite enough to, to, the temperature differential isn't enough to show steam in the air, which is quite interesting. Although, after the earthquake yesterday, there were some bubbles that came up from the volcano and a bit of steam. Uh, for Maybe about 10 fissure. minutes. Yes, there might be a fish I did notice like. when flying over there were bubbles in the ocean, so maybe there are some underwater fissures on the way. Well, there's there has to at least be uh, vents, you know, underwater. Not the vents. Well, you see, um, Doctor, um, we're here for an archaeological dig, so mm. the, there could be things inside here that could never be discovered again. Important things. So I understand what you're saying. Something more I... recent than the 1920s? Because again, that's when this last went. Oh. Oh. Hmm. No, probably not, no. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I do have some geological samples, though, and she'll pull out a different thing. Um, so here are some uh, tephra deposits that I have found. Oh, okay. Um, and you can give me, uh, you have ge geology, right? I do. Give me a I geology do. check, professor. This is... All science talk. <laughs> I fail. I have no idea what the hell this is. Steam okay. gone in my eyes. Oh. 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 Okay. Um, well, you I... know what? Push it. I want to push it. Push it. Push it. Push it real good. Oh. Which um, I... one point of luck need... would make that a success. I'll uh -oh. buy the one point yeah, of luck. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, <laughs> geology. Um, check. You know that tephra deposits are, uh, there's a bunch of different kinds. They're usually differentiated as to whether they are ash-sized particles, chunks of pumice, um, but they're definitely from a pyroclastic fall, which, you know, a pyroclastic is a type of explosion a volcano can have. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, the d d explosions uh, that interject particles into the air, um, there is a lot of that around the shores. You actually notice your little sample the shores of this beach, kind of like when you have seaweed washed up ashore, there's a bunch of that that has washed up ashore on this interior volcano lake. How does, does that make any sense whatsoever? It means that if anything, maybe there is, but there has been some air coming up from the ocean, or there's some taffer deposits coming up in air bubbles. Oh. And it is sitting on the top of the water and then washing ashore. Right. You do mean mm. that there is probably some not so dormant activity going on here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, how long do you um, actually intend to stay here with this increased activity? Well, I came from the Chilean side, and I was supposed to be picked up about two days ago, um, but oh. my radio equipment kind of broke. broke. Um, mm -hmm. There's been some very odd magnetic field fluctuations, also in conjunction with the earthquakes, um, which that is, 
I don't know how that's related to global warming, but I'm sure it's a part of it. Um, right. And so some okay. of my equipment is no longer working, and so uh, I've been checking like every couple of hours just to see if there's any boats in the area, and I was gonna shoot off my flare gun. Um, hopefully. Um, well, fortunately, we I have, have enough rations for like a couple more weeks, but if you guys have extra room on whatever I, I, mode I, of transit I, you came here I on. think we have an extra seat. Uh, I, have, I, I think we have an extra seat. Uh, for you, if you would like to 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 come with us, we were going to do dive in, but it seems like it's not worth dive in. Yeah, yeah. Sign the, sign a release form for this film footage, and you totally got to see it on the plane. That's fine. You could you can be on TV. You can be on this documentary. It's quite exciting, isn't it? Yes, my research getting published to the world is would be quite exciting. I've had a really hard time uh, convincing people about my studies and research. But they just uh -huh. you know. I just don't well, think the politicians are ready to listen, honestly. Um, also, you know, it's not okay. easy for a woman of science, but um, yeah, here, if, my, if you want to look at any of my notes, I just, of I course. have a I, lot I, of them. I, um, I can see that. Um, well, something for a read when we're back, but uh, we'll have to, because we, we're here to do a job and we have to leave before a certain amount of time. So if you want to right. gather your I things. I will start packing up. Um, and I'll talk to my colleagues over there to sh yeah. make sure that they're coming. Now, the lake at the bottom, uh, if you wanted to really do some diving, that is uh, that has not been as uh, affected by these. Mm -hmm. We'll weird go to that. Fluctuations. So hopefully, yeah. look for things. Thank you. And, and he's going to head on over, and um, to everyone, and go. Oh, right. Well, uh, she's kind of been stranded here. Uh, she's researching. Uh, some poppycock about global warming. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry too much about it. Um, you know, everyone needs a hobby. Um, so, um, it is quite fascinating with, with what she has discovered. Everything mm. about the increase in, in volcanic activity. I wouldn't mm -hmm. recommend diving in this um, because this could potentially be an active volcano very, very shortly. Um, yeah, instead but... of dormant. But, Professor, if it's active, then we would just die, right? Uh, yeah. yeah quite possibly. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so I you're think saying us standing here is less dangerous than me coming here to do the job that I'm hopefully getting paid for? Well, you'll still get paid. My, my point is, there's probably nothing in this lake um, uh, for us to find because with there was an eruption. geology uh, check also, you'd also know that with... Uh, volcanic activity often comes a lot of uh, dangerous gases, and so mm -hmm. the water might not be safe for it's not great. extended so, touch. Very poisonous, um, be, maybe instantly be. boiled like a lobster, um, if there's a particular oh. micro like eruption down there, like a fissure comes mm -hmm. up. So I think uh, for your safety and the fact that I don't think we'll find anything that we're looking for, um, I think if we move our things back to the lake at the base of the volcano, I think we'll get better luck there. Plus, it's much safer for everyone. Hmm. And what I mean, are you going to tell Mateo, Professor? Hmm? Um, Who would be an extra it 10 there? in it for him? Someone call me over? Oh, yeah, but, but Mateo, um... Terribly sorry to be a bother for you, but um, this equipment we brought up, uh, we have yeah. to take it back down to the base of the volcano at the lake. Okay. Um, we yeah. came up here, and unfortunately, it's not going to be suitable. On the plus side, we did find someone who needed our help, so... She needed help moving her stuff, too? Uh... Is she struggling? <laughs> <laughs> Taking her a minute just to get everything put away. She seems to be easily distracted by, like, oh, wait a minute. She seems fine, I think. Uh, if she needs help, I'm sure she'll ask. Okay. Um, sorry for taking you, making you all the way up. And You're paying me. Back. Yes, I am. Um. Every time he speaks, I think he's got a constant gentle breeze with his hair. A little Even bit. A little bit. Still, <laughs> a breeze that's always there. <laughs> and he'll just um, like that, shoulder everything back up. It, so I'm going to do a very, very, very quick look that if there are any like 
fascinating deposits that I can take just as a sample. Um, that would be interesting for myself. If, sure. Even if it's just as a hobby. Give me like a, <laughs> a, a spot hidden or our uh, uh, archaeology or geology, whatever, uh, whatever fits your fancy. You might find something. I'll do a spot hidden. Uh, at the same time, could I compare her equipment with the equipment that we found along the lake at the Desidab? Most certainly can. Uh, yeah. Um, looking at it, it, it doesn't seem to. It hers seems to be of higher quality. Okay. Her, her seems to be like, I have. This is my equipment, and so I'm going to buy the best equipment that I can afford. Uh, kind of thing and take very good care of it. It doesn't seem like she has everything meticulously kind of like labeled and stuff. Um, give me a repair check though, or, or an electronics check, either like with electronics or machinery. Give me some kind of like a techie repair uh, check. Electrical repair? Would that be? Sure. Okay. Yeah, electrical okay. or mechanical repair. Beautiful. You do notice, though, that there is something odd about her equipment, though. As you're kind of looking it over, she's like, oh, could you hand me that? And you're like, if you're like, you know, you're hanging out nearby. Sure, I would grab it and then, like, kind of pretend to drop it and then kind of, you know, get down to take a better look at it for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, her, some, her, every a bit of equipment she has that has electronics, weirdly enough, looks like it's been hit with an electromagnet. Like, well, like, like, like deliberately? It it looks like all of her all of her electronic shit has been hit with an EMP. But then he would say, you know, your shit's fried, right? Yeah, that's why I haven't been able to radio out for uh, pickup. So. Yeah, but not just your radio; like everything's fried. That would explain why some of the things weren't working the way I thought they should be. Great, that's gonna be expensive. Do you yeah. have anything electrical that's still working? No, no, nothing. Um, has been working. I have a a. You know, analog watch. I haven't quite gotten the digital watch thing. Um, no, it's all, it's all, it all hasn't worked since the, uh, since the earthquake yesterday. I thought some of it fell off the table. I thought maybe it was just the fall that, uh, did it. But if it's an electrical issue, then, oh, okay. Just, just it's, it, <laughs> I, I, knowing what an EMP can do to a piece of electrical equipment, especially like an 80s piece that's unshielded, I would assume uh -huh. at this part. Is yeah. this shit like fried fried? Like you might as well buy a new one fried. Um, yeah, there's a couple pieces that might be salvageable. There's like, she has some like metal boxes for some of the stuff to help keep it protected from wear and tear. There's a couple things that look like they may have been like in their box and therefore are just a little damaged, but a lot of it looks pretty fried. Uh, it doesn't look like it was a severe EMP, but like, if you just threw your radio in a like a CAT scan machine, it would be pretty fucked up afterwards. He um, would be nice enough to identify the pieces that are super screwed in case you know she wanted to like get rid of some ballast or you know I, yeah. I remember them talking about weight on the seaplane too. So if it comes <laughs> down to yeah. he wants to be able to identify the stuff that's no good and yeah, so there's he some, would say, there's definitely some that's no good oh okay well if it's not salvageable and you, you oh you can't be a seaplane okay um well in that case then i do plan on coming back out here probably another couple of weeks to a month to keep updating my research um i'll just leave it here and take it back with me then so give me that canvas bag letter. you have and he'll <laughs> he'll put it in the canvas bag and then he'll treat it with that that the stuff that they have for the I'm assuming they have the the, the seal up for the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. suits and everything. It'll just waterproof it real quick and you know, put it sure, underneath sure. some. Yep, yep, you're able to to do so. No problems. She appreciates the help. She's like, "Thanks, by the way. That's It's been a it's been a it's been a week." Um By the way, I, can I um out of just curiosity, I'm not yeah. with the authorities, but can I see your permit to be here? Mm. Certainly. She pulls out uh, from her, like, little passport folder, a, a permit from the Chilean authority for scientific, uh, you know, blah, 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 and hand, and hand it over. Ah, fantastic. Um, I'm assuming it looks nothing like the shit that we have, right? It looks close. Right, but this is official? This is very official. Uh, this is, it is still active? Is the date range still active? The date range is still active. It looks like she has, like, a three-month, uh, visa. Okay. And she's been here about um, a month and a half. This is fantastic. If you could hold on to this uh, before we leave, if anybody would ask, 
you can present your credentials and we are all part of the same scientific expedition of course since we're together she didn't make a check could you make me like a persuade or a charm check i really should have given this to somebody else to do this but <laughs> Uh, yes. just, okay. What was the other thing? Charm ain't uh, gonna work. Uh, charm, mm -hmm. so my fast talk could also work if you wanted to use fast mm -hmm. talk. I'll do... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do intimidate. Uh. Um, are you sure? Yeah, I mean, you could give it a go, but she might be less cooperative. Fuck oh, it, I'll try charm. I got so close. I'll go three. I'll, I'll spend three luck and do it. Sure, Holy sure, sure. Shit. <laughs> It's a great pyramid. It'd be a shame if anything happened to it. <laughs> uh, so she's like, I... Just hold her right by my cigarette. She she looks at you and like the rest of your slightly motley crew. And you see she thinks for a second and she goes, and then she looks at you again and she goes, yeah, I could do that for you. I guess you're doing me a favor after all. That's the spirit. Let me get rid of this luck now. Teamwork makes the dream work. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> uh, got lucky though. Um, Nailed it. Nailed it. So yeah, she will. She will be the one to present the, the credentials or scientific, uh, you know, research and study. And, Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Uriah will help carry now. Yeah. So you, she got her stuff, and Mateo is helping carry uh, y'all stuff back down the edge. And as you guys, uh, it takes you guys probably about like half hour 40 minutes to again like since you had started to get things ready to dive and like the film was going and stuff it and she's got to pack up all her stuff it's probably another again half hour 40 minutes maybe an hour before you guys are cresting over the top of the volcano again um getting out of the dome and as you guys are just about to get over the dome you see a flare go up From what direction? Yeah. The stinky fish. You know the last direction you last saw the stinky oh, fish. Oh no, the stinky fish. Uh, uh, can we see it from where we are? You can <laughs> the last few steps over to the edge. Yeah. Yeah, and you see the flare <laughs> slowly doing the, the fall. Uh, and you see, you can see the boat in the distance. You can't make out any details um, from the distance you're at, but you, it definitely did come from the boat. Ooh. Henry will get the the camera rolling again mm -hmm. for a moment, uh, and he'll you know go to the boat with the camera just to see if he can see anything through there. You can. Uh, there's no. I don't think there's some... any kind of. It's not much though. The zoom's not minor. much. It's very. Yeah. yeah it's it's uh. You, you didn't bring in like the the, the again. Zoom also wasn't great on cameras. So yeah. Uh, you zoom in some, and it's you. You see the boat. You see the flare came from it. Um. Give me a, pers a spot hidden check as you're looking through the camera at the boat. Okay. It's gonna be a hard success that you need to see anything. I got a. Ooh, I can make that with one luck. I think that. Is that right? Yeah, one luck makes it a hard success. I'll cool, spend the cool. luck. Cool. Cool. Um, you see. You see Tanner through the camera lens. That's swirling that you saw earlier underneath the boat and like little tendrils of it reaching up and swirling around it as well. It's hard to see again. It's not much zoom. It's just just enough to make out that kind of swirling darkness wrapping around it. Without looking away, without tearing his eyes away. Can you make me a away. sanity check? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. I rolled a 98 and my sanity okay. is 30. This isn't a big one, but you will lose three sanity. Just because this weird swirling keeps popping up. And again, you get that kind of uneasy feeling. You said there's tendrils of it that are coming out of the water. Does it appear mm -hmm. like, am I capturing this on camera? Does it appear like it's coming up over the, the boat? Kind of like, like, you know, like you would have a whirlpool and it kind of like, um, or like a water spout forms. 
kind of like okay. that, but just around the vicinity of the boat. It's kind of swirling in tune with that below it, and the tendrils are kind of swirling like a like a water spout trying to form. So he'll keep it rolling on there for a second without looking away. He'll call over, Mateo, hey Mateo, uh, there's something weird going on around your ship, underneath your ship, something in the water. Can, can you see it? Oh, Come here, thank you take a look. Answer. Looks through. I don't, don't see anything. I wonder why they sent off a flare. So, they, they might be so in trouble. Do, do we need to go check on them? I, I mean, I we might need appreciate to, that. We might need to double time it to the radio. And then, so y'all, y'all, uh, Mateo picks up all the gear and starts going down the mountain a little faster. Um. Yeah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> <You're not laughs> I'm too old for that. <laughs> you just yeah. sit down on a rock. I'll catch you up. So you go down to the boot or the, the seaplane. Um, you're able you're to get down if you're if you're if you're hustling. You can get down in twenty minutes. Um, it's always easier going downhill as well. Um, so you get down there and. Uh, That is pilot. You know who's just his cigars done. And uh you know he's just you see he looks concerned. He's like ah yeah, they um they sent up a flare over there. Did, did you all want to go? Uh, check it out. We are able to uh, float over, if you'd like. I I think they they might be in serious trouble. I just uh, I, I tried the radio and there was uh, no response. But there was something that came over the radio. It was like a ah. Could you do that again? You start it's like a um, like a, like a like a scream like a ah. And then it's cut off. Well, that sounds promising. Yeah, it's just like a mind got in the background. Well, that, well. What that sounds like is a distress signal. And if there's something that we pilots know, she can't say no to a distress signal because one day it could be you or me. Oh, this is this is true. And uh, yeah, and Wash is like going over. And uh, he's weirdly serious about this, and he he's like grabbing the diving suit and throwing it in the back of the plane, and like hopping in there, like getting ready to go. All right, everyone, come on on board. Uh, if we're waiting for the professor, we're just going to come back and pick him up from the time. Uh, well, we only have how many seats? How many people six, are on the boat? Uh, five. So we could we could as long as we don't take off, we can fit more because we have the buoyancy. So we just have to just propeller the scheme. Mm. We can only fly mid six passengers. Well, now we're we're leaving the professor on the dock as he's we go over. He's asking if you're if because the professor's taking his time and everyone else is down there. So he's like, are we just going to come back for him or are we should taking him along with us? Uriah would sit down. I'll wait for the professor. You guys come back and get us. All right. You you see we have the the Mateo. And then the Tana mm. and then the Rush. All right, let's go. Yeah, and, and Wash it, like, like, and Wash is putting on the diving suit in the back of the plane as they're getting ready to go out. And the and the producer also actually get on uh, the the plane as well. Uh, and but he leaves his coffee mug. Uh, on shore. He's dead. <laughs> He'll never drink from the coffee <laughs> mug. <again. laughs> that's the, that's the close in ca capture, <laughs> and it shows him leaving. Yep. You cut to the coffee mug and it says my lot my lucky mug. <laughs> it, it says it says number one director. That's what it says. But it but it only faces him, the font. Um it just looks like a white mug to everybody else when he's drinking. Um But anyways, you all you know, the propellers start going and you go out on the, the, the sea a little bit, you get over there. Takes you about another fifteen minutes to get over there because you're not flying. You're 
Pelerin over. Goes, oh, I think I can get us uh, close enough for you two. Uh, we have a, a board. I can just use it as a, as a thing to get close enough. I can't get too close with the wings, so. Uh, mm. Mm. I can get. I think I can get you close enough to the front of their ship that the wing will be out of the way and you can use the board to get over. Uh, and and Wash is in the back. Do you have any ropes? Hmm? Ah, they're all under the seats. Okay. And Wash will uh, get out some rope and like tie one off on a on a you know a, like a base pin or whatever. Yeah, I got I got stuff. I got there's there's a life preserver in the in the seaplane. It's old, but it's there. Um, you know, get you over there. And uh, will you... be uh, recording Wash. He's he's mm-hmm. this uh, mm-hmm. during this juncture. He's keeping the camera in the back of the plane on Wash. He will ask just once. Wash, is this your uh, first time, uh, you know, committing to a rescue operation like this? And if not, could you maybe uh, tell us a little bit something about a previous experience? Um, well, it's, uh, it's not necessarily my first time. First time being recorded, uh, so I'm a little nervous, but no. Just uh, be natural, man. Just be natural, you know. No, I was a uh, public school... Uh, Lifeguard. It was right after lunch, and I told him, you gotta wait 30 minutes, but no. It was somebody's birthday. But I didn't lose a single kid that day, okay? Maybe another day, but not that day. And I'm not losing anybody today. And then he kind of, like, leans over to the producer, like, looking away from the camera, and kind of gives him, like, a little, like, you know. <laughs> he just, he's still got a cigarette, and he's just, like, gives the nod, and... All right, uh, get the board ready. We are, we are not here. The door. He like slows the propellers, and you, you kind of just drift mm-hmm. up to it. Uh, he's got to make it. He does need to make a check for this, though, so you don't hit. You know, be bad if they hit each other. Um, but you're good. He does good. Um, <laughs> just barely. Just barely. Mateo looks concerned. But, uh, you know, he's he's ready to help. Uh, you guys get to the boat. Yeah, Wash will open the, uh, open the side door, you know, lower yep. it. And, uh, he's, he's gonna get the rope out. And just start looking to see if there's anybody on deck at, like, what the condition of the boat is right now. The now first we... thing you notice is how quiet it is. It's very quiet. It's too quiet. Is there even a whirlpool anymore? Yeah, looking through the camera, do I see what I saw before? Nope. It's so so weird. I, I swear I, I got it on film. Hey, hey there, Hans. Um, <laughs> Wash generally doesn't remember the pilot's name. Like, yeah, uh, the, the co-pilot <laughs> actually speaks up and goes, uh, oh, oh, sorry, other Hans. Um, that, that is Johan. Yeah, that's what I said, Johans. Um, <laughs> did you notice the ship on the way over to it? Not moving? Yeah. <laughs> But if they're at anchor, they wouldn't be moving. Yeah, but we looked out and they were, they had a whirlpool around them and there was all this motion. And now we no got one out else here. else other than Tanner saw the whirlpool. I, I think he would have mentioned it to Wash on the way over there. Yeah, though. probably. Like, he's like, uh, I didn't see a whirlpool. No, nine. Yet. No. Huh. But Tanner, whirlpool? Uh, we can always review the the footage later. It's it's not here now. It's too early for dailies, Tanner. You know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, you, well, you s- said that there was screaming on board. I don't, I don't, I don't hear anything right now. That's as well. I got good luck. Keep the the plane ready. <laughs> and Wash kind of like looks at He's everyone. He's keeping the propeller is like somewhat like slow moving, so that you can he can maneuver if need be. Okay. Well, Wash is gonna um, 
kind of look around the room and try not to look at the camera. Uh huh. Um. <clears throat> well. Well, let's see. Uh, and he's gonna go back out and step down, like on the pontoon of the mm -hmm. of the of the plane. Yep, you get the pontoon, you get the board, you can you know get over to get. And it's got like he'll... hooks on each end to kind of stay in place. Yeah, yeah. And he will uh, he will shimmy over the board. Uh, yeah, can you like... give me a dex check? Everyone who's going aboard, can you just give me like a dex check? Oh, or climb if you have climb. Ooh, what's to, better? Tanner will over. ask the producer like. Uh, he'll say, um, I, I don't know if it's, um, ethical for me to, to go over there, but also, I don't know if it's safe for Wash to go alone, and I don't know if I do go, if I should bring the camera, uh, Oh, no, think... you totally need to bring the camera. You, you and Mateo get over there and you record the truth. Oh, All right, um. Fuck my life. <laughs> I think that, uh. I think Wash is gonna push this just because. Go for it! I love a good push. As the as maybe a wave kind of bucks the board a uh -huh. little bit and he slips. Uh but uh Oh my gosh, wow. both of you. Extreme successes. <laughs> but like like literally what happens is he gets bucked a little bit and swings off but wraps around and like is underneath the board. And so he just like shimmies across <laughs> under the board and then <laughs> climbs up over up. yeah, over nice. the railing. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> and uh, he's like see. hops up and looks back, he's like, You got that, right? Uh and Tanner wants he You have to decide, go over one at a time. So yeah, you probably did time. get it. Yeah. He's he's got you entirely. He's locked on you, and as soon as you're over to the other side. Um, he's been trying to get up the courage to go and he doesn't really know, you know, this camera is going to be awkward. So he just books it. He doesn't say anything. He just starts running the camera, bouncing, 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 <laughs> um, his legs pumping as fast as they can. And just by sheer dumb luck before it tips over, he collapses, almost drops the camera in the water, grabs onto it and makes it to, to your arms to wash his arms. <laughs> You did it. Yeah, we still gotta go back, though, right? Well, I mean, if you already made it over, you know the way back. So, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be right. fine, okay? Just remember that part in Dos... Oh, no, wait, never mind. Shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. I saw Star Wars, though. Uh, it, it was good. Oh, okay. You never seen it? Uh, we we should probably talk about that later. He looks okay. right. <laughs> well, there's a whole there's a troubling little scene in the second one. Ma but Mateo makes it over and he goes, yet. "All right, what's what's going on?" He almost like uh, stumbled a bit, but because he's not used to like the seaplane aspect, once he gets on the boat, he's fine. Um, and it, and it interrupts any potential Star Wars spoilers for our dear Tanner. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, uh, you look around the boat and you don't see anyone. It's not a big boat. It's like a fishing boat. So there's like it's a lot of like cargo space underneath with some water and like the fish. You see, you see the net. Actually, you don't see the net. You see it, where the net should be attached. Okay. And uh, Wash, uh, he's gonna tie the rope off just mm -hmm. to kind of keep the the boat and the plane near each other. Yeah. Um, is is there an anchor dropped? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tanner will follow Wash's lead on this, but he is trying cool. to get shots of uh, anything, and he's never done a documentary, like crime documentary or anything like that. But you know, he's watched some, and so he's and he's emulating that, trying to like capture little things, things that are personal to the people here. You know, any memorabilia, but also anything that might give a sign as to yeah. what happened here. And uh, you know, Mateo is like. Hola! Mi amigos! Uh, he's just, you know, trying to call out <laughs> with a little Spanish I've learned from Dora the Explorer. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, he looks troubled that there's no response. Uh, and I would like you to give me spot hidden checks. Please and thank you. 
not good at that. Well, that's okay. Oh, my Tanner is. Poor Tanner. The way you said that, you made it sound like it's one of those spot hidden checks you want to fail. <laughs> they, no, no, it's I fine. A, a hard fine. success. <sighs> Great, you see a lot of things. Um, so you see uh, where the, the fishing net was like would be hooked up to the really long beams that kind of go out to keep it in the water. Uh, it looks like it was cut through very cleanly, like a right through. Um, so you see like a bit, some bits of the net hanging there. But the rest of it seems to have gone into the ocean. The anchor is still there. You see that... There doesn't appear to be anyone on board, but there's a lot of water on the deck right now, which is uh, not unusual for a fishing vessel, except that the water's got little tinges of pink in it in places. In that, uh, if you go, you w keep walking around, there's on the, some of the, like, the inside of the walls little... Couple, a couple, couple, not many, flecks of blood, maybe? And that the, uh, you actually see the radio, well, and hell radio, it's, it's been severed. Uh, you see it's on the, on the deck outside of the little office where the steering would be. Uh, cable cut clean through. Um, Mateo, I don't suppose y'all were repainting this boat, were you? Uh, no. Oh, no, senor. No. That, that, that's unsettling. <clears throat> Tanner will get the shots and he'll also like note anything out loud uh, for Wash's sake, but also just to get it on mm -hmm. camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and he will, he will like that pink in the water mm -hmm. and on the wall against his better judgment, reach out and just with a finger fleck against it to see if it's wet. Oh, yeah. And it's then wet. taste it on his tongue to see mm. if it tastes like copper. It does. It does. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's blood. That's blood, Wash. That's, that's, that's all Little blood. Bitch. Dios mio! Um, well, I guess we should, uh, 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 and wa now Wash is starting to get a little worried, and he's just going to go and look at the boat itself to see if it's functional. Give me a boat check! A boaty boat, pilot boat check. Whatever check you got pertaining to that. Okay, so I have specifically subpilot. Sure! That's would a, you say that that would a, work? That's boats, yeah. A boat is kind of like a sub that it's, just can't go in the Z axis. It just axis. can't go, yeah, it just can't go, it, it can only go, like, front left. You know, I can't. It doesn't yeah, have the really Z axis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to know about water and stuff to ride boats and and subs. So yeah, sure, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's it's your boat check. All boats. All right. Uh huh. So yeah, uh, the boat itself, the hull is intact. The, the integrity seems fine. Uh, yeah, they probably should do some maintenance on this thing. Uh, but when you get to the control room, you see like where the radio had been severed. Um, you see why it's been severed. There is. About a, a half inch to an inch wide gash clean through the electrical console of this ship. About five foot long, about that wide, just going you know, at like an angle. Like if someone was standing there holding a radio, uh, it would have cut right through the radio cord and. Like the steering wheels, the bottom half of it's on the floor now. It's just kind of clean through about five feet over. And there's like another splash of blood on blood. The, uh, the chair. Yeah. Following yeah, the same. Follow a, li angle. A, a little bit, yeah. Just but but it doesn't look like it followed the whole slash, just like the end of it. Yeah, you see Wash looking like uh, maybe like advanced calculus is going in his head mm -hmm. as he's like. And like he, his brain is sort of imploding. Yeah, can you now. make me a sanity check? Because yeah, um, figured that was coming. Yeah, because um, yeah. he's trying to figure out what could have cut through all you of can't that. Think of anything. Yeah. And there's no signs of like you maybe like like a, like a heated something like a torch. 
Could, could have, but there's no. Too. Of course. Sure, what? I'm not gonna stop you. Oh, but you, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, so you're see, used to a little bit of weird. You're like, oh, it's blood. This is gonna really be bad. He's really focused on Wash's reaction, getting Wash's oh. reaction. Sorry, I didn't mean to click that again. Uh, cool. So I failed my uh, initial sanity check. This this one's worse than the one that that Don failed earlier. So you're gonna t lose two two points of sanity. Um, uh, yeah, you can't think of anything that would make a gash through straight plastic, metal, steel. Like that. Captain, I, in your professional experience, can you speak to uh, what might have caused something l like like this? He pants away to get the steering wheel that's on the ground and how wild that looks. And it mm -hmm. goes back to wash. Wash? You? Wash, you all right? I mean, uh, it, uh, we need to, we need to, and he like, you, that typical hand on the camera, like, right, right. Mm -hmm. he pushes it out of the way, like, he, he'll, he'll stop rolling for a moment and lower the camera. And, and Mateo has gone, like, looking through, like, 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 I got some bunks down below. He's like, and you just hear, like, Dios mío, and me compadres! And he just, he just, he just... killed this, somebody here. Like, something cut through a person. And, and he just kind of, like, makes a motion with the line in the console. Like... No. And I did see something. What did you see? And he kind of grabs Tanner by the jacket. What did you see? I, it was, uh, it was like, oh, not a whirlpool. It was like swirling in the water. The color was darker. Something was rising. Something coming up. I. Somebody the first time. It was like what we saw at the bottom of that lake, man. It was like what that. I saw. I saw some black sand, man. What do you mean? It's... What did you see at the bottom of the lake? Swirling. I don't. I. I got it on camera. I. We can. If the bodies aren't here, they gotta be down there. They gotta be. Oh, Mateo. Uh, See. Si. He kind of slowly lets go of Tanner's jacket and straightens it out. <clears throat> where, where are me compadres? This is so strange. Um. Donde esta, compadres? What's donde esta? It means where are your compadres? Oh, <laughs> donde esta, mi compadres? <laughs> donde esta el baño? Uh, Vos está en barrio, se me ya. That's not my language. So, I'm trying, I'm trying. What the I don't know where they are. I looked the quarters, I even checked with the fishes. The water level where the fish is is abnormally high, but I don't know, uh, uh nothing else. Is, have you checked, when, oh, can you, can you drain the water level where the fishes are? I have a controller's up here. And he kind of looks at the control <laughs> panel like, is there a way to manually? Uh, I could go up to the side and try to open the... It's difficult. It's okay, the professor will pay you an extra ten. Okay, you got some rope? And, and oh, I just had a baby, I need the money. And so he could like the rope, kind of like, make like a little harness. Mm -hmm. Uh. Kind of like go over, and he's gonna try to to make a check to open them. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's not a success, though. Um, unfortunately, he's like, ah, I just know the mechan the the mechanics are, are locked in place. I can't uh, pry it open. 
Uh, as, he, as he says, like, dangling off the edge of the boat, kind of like, bobbling. Can I... Get splashed uh, occasionally. Wash kind of, Wash kind of looks around to see if there's like, you know, like, you know, they have like poles to like get people out of the water and different yeah, pools and stuff. Sure do. He's going to look around and see if there's anything that he can maybe like reach over the edge and help him try to pry that open. Uh, yeah, there'd possible. probably be something like that. There's enough, there's enough poles on a fishing vessel to like try to try to do that. Um, he can roll again. Uh, can you give me a strength check? And if you succeed, he will get a bonus to his, his check. Nice. Hard success. So he will get a 20% bonus to this. A 20% bonus. It's just... It's it's difficult uh, to get in there. Like, you see it, like, budge a little bit, but again, these are, like, all gears and, like, mechanics and things. They're, the hydraulics are seized, it would seem, due to... So whatever happened to that console, and it's making it difficult to pry these open. Lindy, are there any, um, I don't know, like fire axes, oh, larger yeah. hammers? There's like, a, there's like a machete. Okay. Uh, so I, while they're working on it, he's Couple looking around. Them. He finds a machete. Is the machete stained with blood, by the way, or is the machete clean? Machete is clean. Okay, just wanted to check. It's Figured got like that. some fish scales on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and if they're struggling, probably without giving them the proper warning, he would let out a pretty primal sound for him, or come running towards what they're trying to unjam, and just start banging on it with the machete as hard as he can. So it's on the outside of the boat, about okay. ten feet down. You can charge over the boat if you want, though. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna stop you. Is that, I mean, what would I stand on? How would I be? Mateo, I, just... I don't know. <laughs> He's got like a rope harness. That's why he had to like get the harness because he's he's over there and, and he's got the pole to try to help. Now you can help wash with his leverage. I'm gonna roll sanity oh, to see no. if it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to help, but it's a little too much. Wash probably as he comes down after you and just starts swinging and banging on this thing as hard as he can with a yeah, machete. Yeah, kind get oh, yeah. Wedge it uh, in if he can and then. Just... Senor, Whoa, senor, kid. senor, Whoa, baby, kid. that's it's just sharp. I mean, not that sharp, but it's sharp. Uh. T Tanner, Tanner, buddy, buddy. We gotta find those people. We gotta find where they are. We gotta find out what happened to them. We will, we will. I got an idea. Yo, Hans! <sighs> Sorry, just, I mean, you... Mateo. You, you hear, no, you hear that. No, you hear that. That's the side that Johan makes, as you call him, Johans. Yeah. Uh... That's just that it wasn't me. It was it was it was all NPC. <laughs> yeah. Um would it be possible for your plane to tow this ship back to the harbor? Is a hold full of fish? Amongst yeah. something else? Yeah. Uh, no, that would be a bit, uh, a bit heavy of a load for the Frau to pull. Hmm. There's only a seaplane. It's a wunderbar seaplane, but there is, there is a fishing vessel. Tugboat. Let me see. What, what, what's my repair at? So I'm pretty sure I purposely did not take repair because we have... I'm a king. Cool. Yep. Don't worry about it. You seem to be getting lower in the water. I'm sorry? You seem to be getting lower in the water. It's Are you sinking. saying we're sinking? The, the boat might be sinking. Yeah. Oh boy. Gives a meaningful look to wash. Do you so what are you thinking you... in regards to the situation? You want to get back on the seaplane? Yeah. Alright. But why are they sinking? I 
be an opening below. Son of a bitch. And Wash, uh, he gets up and starts walking back across the gangplank to the plane. Mm-hmm. And he already has his diving suit on, because I did say that. You did? You did say that. Uh, so he's just gonna grab, uh, his snorkel and mask, not the full get-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's right there, and put the fins on, and he's just gonna, like... First off, grab a rope. Sure. Like, if you yeah. feel... And he says to Danny and, and Mateo, he's like, you feel anything pulling on this, that sound, that anything, you start pulling me back up. I'm really good at pulling the fishing lines, so. Good. <clears throat> and Tanner will just really quickly try to explain the bare minimum to the producer. Uh, there might be a lot yeah, of Yeah, he's like people. hanging out of the seaplane <laughs> with his cigarette. <laughs> What do you mean, dead people? They sent up a flare. Yeah, well, uh, I don't think they're there anymore. It's not a rescue. They're there. They might be in the fishing hold. Uh, it, I got it all on camera. All you need to know right, is good. that there's a good chance that um, Wash there might find what what's left of them, and maybe they'll be survivors. I, I I don't know. Okay, okay. Well, we'll just keep your eyes open. I I have a rope over here too. So, uh, just wait, 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 uh, you, yeah. you don't want me to go down there. No, 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 like, just keep an eye from up there. Don't, no, we don't, we didn't bring the box for the camera for, for this. Yeah, thing. okay. Yeah, and about that, like, ap about the end of that conversation, uh, Wash has all of his stuff, and he's like... Don't worry, I've got you. He, cro he crosses himself, even though you've never seen him do that, and he dunks in the water. Yeah, uh, you go, you go. Hanging onto his rope. In the water, holding onto the rope. Take a deep breath on your snorkel. Uh, give me a swim check. I can do that. This would be separate from diving, because we're not diving. It can be diving if you wanted. I have the same score in both, because okay, sure. it's professional. He's a professional. <laughs> so, you're caught between a, a boat and a seaplane, uh, really. Uh, <laughs> yes? You gonna um, push it? Yeah, I okay. actually think yeah, it's time to uh, to sure. uh, in the words of the great R and B single, push it, push it real good. Push it real um, good. Where are you at? Oh my god, why are you running so slow? Roll twenty. Scroll down. All right, is it just this character sheet? Does this do this for y'all? Anyway, I guess it's just me. All right, we're push. <laughs> So, you're swimming with your snorkel, and, um, again, it's like you're caught between a rock and a hard place, but instead of a rock and a hard place, it's a seaplane and a fishing vessel, uh, and there's waves, because you're on the open water, so you get, you get in there just as a wave pushes you into one of them. Can I have a con check for you to hold your breath and stuff? as it pushes you below. You hold your breath. Mm -hmm. I've held it, my breath for nine minutes before. It, it does, wasn't voluntarily, but it, I did it. Yeah, it does still hurt though. So you are gonna take some physical damage. Or damage, uh, that's, you've got your, your root, your ribs are basically super bruised uh, from just hitting into the side of this fishing vessel with that wave. You're pushed under, but even despite you get taking the hit, um, you might have even cracked a rib, honestly. Um, you're able to hold your breath, because you are a professional. And um, you, it, the water pushes you under, and you see in the, on, on the underneath of the fishing vessel, another gash, about yay wide, made along the length is it is the, the yay bottom. wide about the same yay wide that was uh almost up in exactly the yeah second question uh-huh does this angle align with that in the control room or is that a separate gash that was made at another time uh so the angle it's it's this one's a lot longer it looks as if like, if someone had a knife, like a machete, 
for example, and went bah in the control room. This one looks like someone went along just the bottom seam of the boat below water level. Same, it looks like same tool, different, uh, same time. It doesn't look very old, uh, but different. Yeah. Uh, this is a longer, maybe more controlled precision line. Like, another one looked like a quick slash. This one looks meticulous, maybe. Well, that's unsettling. It is. It is. Uh, well, Wash has seen enough, and <laughs> yeah, this this boat is is doomed, um, and he's gonna swim. It's back gonna. Up. It's probably sink within the hour. Yeah. He's gonna swim back up to cool. the. Cool. Uh, you gonna to tug on your rope? The... Yeah. Mateo <sighs> pulls you up. Oh, my rib! My rib! Okay. Can you? Uh, and he like is lifting only one arm up as he's holding his other to the side to yep. help let Mateo help him up out. Yeah, Mateo. Mateo helps you out. He he's he's very strong. Uh, lift you up and uh, more dexterous than strong, but still strong. Picks you up, sets you on. What'd you see? Is the boat okay? No, she's going down. Um, do you remember what the control room look like guys Let's see with that cut yeah there's another one like the entire length of of for Baldister. and also madre de dios it's easy and he like like but, he grabs uh, a, a rosary that's around his neck so something cut a hole in the bottom of the ship. And that same something cut the control panel inside the ship. Just just saying those two sentences, because it's what we've observed, I cannot think of how those two sentences exist in reality. Uh, maybe we want to get this plane moving? Maybe? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Mateo, is there anything you want to say before we leave? Yes. Oh, that was loud. That was loud. Uh, oh, wrong color. Oh. <clears throat> I've, it was so traumatic. I aged so quickly. No, uh. Oh. Uh. Bye. Mi compadres, I hope we meet again someday. And he just is, 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 crosses himself, and he looks very troubled. Mm. Like, but he doesn't know quite what to think. He did make a sanity check, so he's okay-ish. Mm. Um, and he will be propellered back to shore. Uh, and he, so, but take, this whole thing took about half an hour, 40 minutes again. Um, and you'll get back to you the... Pl 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 Back to back to the shore, and uh, where you guys are waiting. So while they were doing that, what, do you, what was there any conversations you guys had all, had ashore? It was awkwardly quiet. Cool. <clears throat> Sorry, sand guts in my throat. <clears throat> Mine too. So <laughs> <laughs> Although, if the doctor is there, he might go off and cheer geology sh oh samples. she would be all about it she would chat yeah. to you about science stuff as long as you wanted she never gets yeah. tired talking about it so for the f i would like to think for the first 10 minutes it was just uriah <laughs> so just oh yeah no uriah would immediately leave he would get within <laughs> yeah, like yeah, visual yeah, eyesight yeah. of you all but out of hearing yeah he would <laughs> understandable and then he would go and talk to the doctor for, you know, about geology and what. Oh yeah, she's discover. got. She knows. She lo She knows a lot about. She minored in uh, volcanology, uh, mm -hmm. majored in climatology. So you know, she she is. She's, she's, she knows a lot about this volcano and like some of the weird phenomena that's been happening in the area. Apparently, I might even like tell her about what. 
we found in that lake. You know, but with Ooh. like the magnetic material as well that, you know, she like this, this... would be fascinated to look at your findings later if you if you would like. Sure, she can come back and, and see him. Cool. Uh so you guys uh have that conversation and then do you see the the de Frau pulling back a uh, going back up? So, nobody on the boat? Uh. Oh, and Wash gets out of the back and he's like, oh, fuck. And he's like holding his side and like kind oh. of gasping a little bit. Like, oh, uh, you all right? Are, are, are you okay? Uh, well, I, um. Are you wet? I, uh, well, yeah, I got in the water to check out the boat because we thought it was sinking. Uh, it is it, sinking. It turns out it was sinking. Oh. Um, oh. But I got I got banged up against the hull, and I think I cracked a rib. Oh. Um. Maybe you should sit down. Uh, yeah. Sit maybe over there. Um. Just rest. But uh, they're all dead. We, we, we don't. What? We don't know that for sure. Okay. There were no bodies to be found, but there was a pinkish substance in the water on the bridge, and there were blood there was splatters. A lot, of blood. a lot of blood. There was a lot of blood. Um, Not that much, and, really. And you'd think there'd be a lot more if they were all like macheted up or something, you know. But there was there was blood, some blood. It was like a little splash, right? Yeah, but like some a... splashes, little splashes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there were light splashes and no bodies. <laughs> So wasn't a full Jackson Pollock painting, you know? Yeah, it's all over the. It was, it was Jackson yeah. Pollock's early work when he was doing strictly <laughs> seven by tens. Uh, um. So what they 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 they, they, they fell overboard? What? Uh, unless they got cut and then fell overboard, dog. I think what they're saying is there's blood over there. Well, I mean, fishing ship is 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 quite dangerous. No, there's a lot of. Uh, you know, with the trawling and and the nets, you can quite easily be injured. Mm -hmm. uh, but but mm -hmm. to, to get all of them is so unusual. Something cut a hole in the hull, and something cut a hole in the control panel through the radio, through probably someone because that's where one of the blood splatters are. The same thing did both of those things, whatever that is. That's as much as I can really tell you. I couldn't get into the into the fishing hold. Uh, we tried, but we couldn't get in there. Right. Do you do you think they maybe went there for safety? Did you cry out to see if anyone would respond? Uh, no, we were calling Mateo, for them. No, Mateo nothing answered. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, there was a lot of calls. There's no responses. The fishing oh. net was cut, even. Like, an even cut all the way across. Not torn. Cut. Um, Uriah, do you, any ideas what could do that? I mean... Well, to be very fair, Doc, the only idea I've had since the boys here returned was... And he would start kind of duck-duck-goosing around, pointing at the pilot and the co-pilot the four of us, Mateo and the doctor, and say, yeah, my only thought is, uh, who's staying? Oh. Well, yeah, there's seven of you now. Um. Ah. Uh, um. With some weight and balance, we might be able to make it work, but it'd be a little bumpy, bumpy off flight. Are you confident you could do it? I've been flying most of my life. I mean, the, the I mean, flight here was the smoothest flight I've ever experienced in my life. Very good. It was very good. But we also have a lot of equipment. Oh, yeah. We, we could... We just dump the excess fuel and that would have even out the weight, and, you know. Okay. Well, let's just hold on. <laughs> let's not, let's not put that number one. I love that idea. 
I just don't want to put that at the top of the list, is all. Fuel is very heavy. heavy. It's quite, quite a standard aviation procedure to, in fact, to dump fuel if you're having weight issues. You know, just, as long as you have enough to get to your destination, you're fine. You fix the fuel line. Usually, the reason we only had enough to get there back initially was because we were constantly leaking fuel whenever we flew. But now that we have no leaks, you know, we've got extra, yeah, plenty of extra fuel. I'm great. I, I, I think we should listen to the pilot. He he knows his ship. It's up to you, though. I'm as long as I'm getting paid, I don't really, you know, little hazard well, you pay mean... wouldn't hurt. But I don't know. Speak to the director for that. I'm already down a good couple. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, Professor, uh, mm. we'll, well, we'll talk about hazard pay for Mateo. Anyway. What? <laughs> There's 10 extra bucks in for you. <laughs> Does Mateo look, like, shattered right now? Mateo looks... How's he doing? Um... Incredibly hot and vacant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 He Just looks staring into the distance. He looks <laughs> troubled. <laughs> Poor Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's on the He's just sitting there on a rock. You've got, like, you've got sunlights mm. behind, you know, like the sun rays behind him. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> troubled. Just thinking like racking his brain as to like what could it be? The the words unrequited twilight appear behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tanner will just very briefly, uh, not wanting to hold up getting out of here, uh, kind of head to Uriah and say very quietly, uh, I don't want to ask, you know, too much of you and some of the, some of the stuff that we got on camera is kind of a little disturbing, but, um, I got a lot of it on footage, and I can't make sense of it. I don't know if Wash was able to make sense of it, but I, I feel like um, very confusing. Maybe if, maybe if uh, and he he talks, you know, to Uriah. Um, maybe you might be able to make sense of it if you want to take a look at the, the footage later. You mean like for artistic purposes or for details? I, there's something that happened there, man. Uh, I can't explain it, and I, I don't know why I didn't know any of those people, but I feel like they deserve to... I want to know what happened to them, and if it's going to happen to other people. There's been missing ships in this area for the past few months. What am I going to tell uh, Gabriel's wife? <sighs> um, For the first time, Uriah would soften a bit at uh, with Tanner saying, he even go so far as if Tanner would allow it, he would put his hand on his shoulder. Oh. Uh, it, it, and it would be like a it, it, less comfort and more like a redirect. Um, but there's it's still not forceful or, or rough or anything like that. But he would kind of take him and turn him to, you know, face his eyes or, you know, look at him if he's not. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it, man. I'll take a and listen. Eh, tragedy's a tragedy, but it's a. Uh, it's not like a virus, it's not contagious. So, you know. You see a kind of like a strange reaction in his eyes. Uh, it's, you know, you've seen probably people go distant before. He goes distant for a moment and then he goes hard, uh, like a hard stare, not at you, but just kind of past you. And then he's back meeting you in the eyes, in, in your gaze and says, yeah, yeah, I know. You're right. You're right. But if there's something going on here and maybe we're the only people with any kind of evidence, then we might be able to help people. Um, I have a suggestion if yeah, you wanted to, if you were curious. Um, so six seats, seven people, we could radio the Chilean uh, Coast Guard to see if they could come uh, pick up uh, Mateo or myself. Uh, but we probably would have to deliver a statement as to what happened, and it kind of seemed like you were trying to maybe avoid the Chilean Coast Guard. We could fit seven. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to be hasty. <sighs> oh, um, here, do you want me to look at that? 
your ribs. Wait, I, th- I, I didn't know you were that kind of doctor. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm a geologist. <laughs> Take a look at that word. Um, I'm not, but I, I do have some first aid training. It might help to at least make sure nothing's broken. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. Sure. Um, and yeah, he, uh, you know, starts basically like pulling his mm-hmm. diving wetsuit down. She will try to give you a first aid check. You'll still need a medicine for further treatment, but she's gonna try to first aid you. And she succeeds. You get one hit point back. Yay. And uh, she also gives you like some, some you know, aspirin. You know, some little, oh, she's got some pain reliever. But this will also help. Um, I, no, it, don't worry, news. doctor, I, I got that covered. Uh, oh, okay. Nothing's uh, broken, just uh, just some cracked ribs. Uh, I'd take it a little easy if I were you for a little bit. Try to avoid any additional impacts to the area. I mean, I appreciate that, Doc. Okay. Um, the professor's going to take the director to one side um, quietly. And yes. He's going to, um... he, he has also gone on shore, picked back up his coffee mug, and was just like... Of course, yes. Lindy, at the exact same time, I'd like to talk to the pilot. Okay, <laughs> sure. No. <laughs> Give me just a second. He, he, he said it first, so we're cool. <laughs> um, so, um, just to inquire yeah. on what we're doing here. Obviously, yeah. we cannot continue with uh, this. Yeah, things got a little derailed here today. It, it is. Uh, uh, we did is get some great footage of the volcano, though, and you and your very... Scientific conversation that you it's had with the the, the, geolo- the good doctor here, yeah. The, yeah, the geological. She didn't even charge anything. anything. It's, it's so, really interesting. Yeah. Um, however, I'm I'm a bit more worried about yeah. wash. Um, yeah, he brought her. He, he, he uh, did some skin. some rib cracks, you know. Yeah, they, he, I don't think he'll be able to dive, and we're on a tight schedule. Going to dive with cracked ribs. Really? Maybe not deep, but you know. Is, is the next place deep? Well, and this was the next dive site. Um, I can look some rearranging of the schedule. Oh wait, I don't have my beard. Oh. There we go. Well, I was missing better. something. It's not it was weird. Uh, it so was light uh, from the sun. It was the sun or whatever. Um, I can have Danny rearrange the schedule a bit. Uh, we were right. gonna do some more diving, but uh, we can uh, do the boat excursion tomorrow. You know. Oh. Oh, yeah. I, I think that'll be good. Yes. Yeah. So. We'll we have to see if the sub's ready, but uh, we can definitely do the boat. I know there was like, you know, there's like a lighthouse and some shows and things. Uh, uh, also, I know Danny's been speaking with some of the locals today about some uh, of the things that have washed up on the main shores of the beaches. Mm. So we'll probably go back and uh, let Wash have the rest of the day off and. Uh, you know, do whatever uh, whatever people she's found to talk to. We all can uh, go. Uh, uh, okay, if, if if you're confident. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And he'll. <laughs> Just be like, all right, cool, good, good talk, good talk. Now let's uh, let's all get on that plane, I guess. Dump some fuel, whatever. We're not dumping into the equipment. We can't replace it. I mean, we could. It's just not in budget. Get on this plane, then, and hope we yeah. don't need the extra fuel. Get on the plane. I'm sure you won't. I'll be fine. Get on the plane, including Mateo, and you know your new your new doctor friend. He get uh, aboard. Uh, Hans, the delightful co-pilot, uh, does some rearranging of things. Uh, throws a couple of things off onto the shore, like the life preserver, because those suckers are actually pretty heavy. Um, you're like, oh, if we go off, we're gonna have bigger problems than this. And he just throws it off. Uh, says it was old anyway. Um, just uh, leaves the, the board. It's like, oh, we've been a good board. So it does fail. Yeah, and he just throws off, like, <laughs> some stuff. That's all right, so I'm going to get a few, a few gallons of fuel. Yeah, put it in. Uh, he's like, uh, and she's like, um, I'm sorry, are you fuel into the, the, and he's like, oh no, we have a container for it. And then he, <laughs> he's gonna go <laughs> get the fuel 
and uh, drain some. Uriah, would you like to assist in the uh, liquid volume uh, measurements about the, you know, like how much fuel to drain? I I'll let you know when you tell me what skill that's required, and then I will either just agree your, or just, just your mechanical, mechanical stuff, because it's all like weight balance. Uh, you yes, know, then like I would really like to help. You know how many fluids Son go of in. A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many fluids like it takes no, to you do know what? certain things. Fuck this! I'm pushing this. You're pushing I, it. Push I, it. I really, I really think we've got. I'm on to something here. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks Beautiful. good, guys. So uh, he he, will, he won't get any um, bonuses to this check. You know what? It's so good you can probably lose some more. We could probably get some more. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> fine. Shave it down a little bit more. Right. You're fine. So you take off. You get, everyone gets on board. All right, hold on. We're going to go with totally the right amount of fuel. Uh, and... <laughs> This is a hell of a way to go, boys. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to push it. <laughs> it wasn't a 100, so we were able to push. Yeah, so you hear... This guy planet? needs to retire today. <laughs> it's over today. <laughs> So you hear like the and then he's like, oh guys out he goes, good, mine for all, mine for all. He's just he just sweet talking the plane a little bit. And uh and then it takes off a little little bit of a and then smooth. You're airborne. Everything seems fine. As you take off, you see the last bit of the fishing vessel go beneath the surface of the ocean and you know it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a blumpier flight like he said because you know there is uh, you know a few hundred more pounds than there was previously on uh thankfully you're only one person and some equipment over um and you guys flying and you see the docks they're right up there. And then you hear. Yes, ah, oh, it might be a little short. Uh, everyone, make sure you're buckled in. Uh, this might be a bit of a bumpy landing. <laughs> and he starts to have his descent a little earlier, a little bit, uh, rather than like, you know, his smoother descent early. This one's kind of more of a. He shifts into the wind a little bit so that he has a little bit more updraft going to keep you up a little longer. And uh, he needs to make a check. And uh, based on his check, we'll see if any additional rolls need to be made. <laughs> and the propellers stop. You hear the engine has run out of gas, but he glides this sucker in skew, 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 onto the waves and pulls up like Captain Jack Sparrow at the beginning of the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Just right up alongside the dock. And he goes, ah, thank you for flying on the Frau. We hope you had a wonderful buff flight, and I will be talking with your company about hazard pay. Thank you all very much, and uh, have a good day. Good tug. Tug. And uh, you all lived! You all survived the flights, and he, he look, he kind of like, oh, takes his hat off after <laughs> landing at the port. And he's like, he even I don't snaps. He talks in German with his co-pilot, and... Uh, <laughs> Toot producer was looks over at you and Ryan goes uh, uh, Oh wrong color, oh no. <laughs> uh, real glad you were there to like help with the fuel checks. I mean imagine if you hadn't helped. Uh, right. <laughs> and uh you get you guys are start take off your stop your 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 stuff, uh Mateo, we're gonna have to like have you sign a waiver for the camera thing, and um, 
probably talk to the dock master about getting you a boat back to Chile. Yeah, this is, uh, it's not my fault. It was a rescue. It was a rescue. You you can attest to that, right, pilot? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, is it? Uh, is that? Yeah, that's Danny. Danny's coming up. Go go see what she has to say. I'm gonna deal with this fiasco. And Danny comes rushing up to you guys as you guys are on dock, sweet dock, and not uh, you know, ocean, sweet ocean, or plane crash, sweet plane crash. Oh no. <sighs> She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you guys are back. Um, we have found something amazing. You have got to see it. You're, just, you're not going to believe it. And that is where we're stopping today's episode. <laughs> is it an emergency room? <laughs> <laughs> and right, right before the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're gonna go around and we're gonna say um, who we are, if you're online, where we can find you, and your favorite moment from tonight's game. We'll go in the same order we started in. Tom, how was today for you? <laughs> it been pretty well. It was really good. I loved it. It was so, so good. Um, <clears throat> I am Hotflakes Tom. You can find me on Twitter at Hotflakes Tom um, and everything else, basically. Um, I currently uh, are on the Modifius channel uh, every Tuesday doing Star Trek Adventures where I play a very uh, sweet and innocent Lieutenant Harvey uh, who's an engineer and just likes to fix Harvey. everything. And then obviously on the Thursday uh, with uh, every other Thursday we do Blood and, Blood and Sand which is a Game of Thrones game uh, on Follow Black Cats which I very happily share with Don. Uh, it's a lot of fun so you can check me out there. Um, favorite moment. I almost cried with laughter with all the fail rolls at that <laughs> very end. I thought it was game over for all of us. The fact that we failed, that all of the mechanics just tech at the beginning, that it, with a push, <laughs> then it was like a 99 for flying or something like that, wasn't it, Lindy? You rolled 99, 99 for the flying. Yeah. And because well, we went off, you could push it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, well, this was good. We all die. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> but it's moments like that in these games that just make it so funny. You couldn't plan it. It's just, and I love those type of roles. So it's very rarely that I get like roles being my favorite moment, but it's stuff like that just made me burst out laughing. I love it. I love it. Fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. Our, our wonderful professor who made a, a fellow scholastic friend today. Did, um, yeah. She, she can come back to um, the hotel and we can, yeah. like, you know. Yeah, maybe she'll work on yeah. the show for free. Uh, you I've know, got, I've got Mr. Grimm would love now. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Greg, how was today for you? That was fantastic. Uh, Greg Grimjack21502. Um, I don't do much, but you can see me on Fridays over on Academic Foxhole on Troopers Channel for a little Traveler RPG, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, my favorite part today was, uh, and uh, it was stolen. All we had this string of incredible, like extreme success, hard success, just knocking it out of the park with these great rolls. And I knew it. I knew this system. And I'm like, <laughs> here they come. I know they're coming. And as soon as we got that mechanics check at the end, I knew no matter what that the push would be <laughs> unsuccessful. So I had to go. I had to make it as awful as humanly possible. And as Cthulhu would have it, it is not our time yet, my friends. It will be soon, but not yet. Can't wait until we, we meet our end. Until next time. Fabulous. Thank you so much um, for being here and contributing. Um, Don, how are you? How's Tanner? Hey. How, how's oh, Tanner? I'm great. Uh, Tanner uh, Tanner started off not great, so he's he doing worse now. Hard. But I'm, I'm awesome. Uh, yeah, I really like today. Um, I've kind of liked how every session we've played so far has been you know episodic and kind of different and you're seeing you know people mix and match um i really of course like the dice rolls tonight were very very funny but very cinematic too and i enjoyed that i i also enjoyed um you know the little tiny moments um like hearing the two the scientist and and the doctor uh chat 
I thought as nerdy as it was, you know, chat geology, I thought that was really cool. Or hearing about uh, the uh, doctors or the, you know, about Marvin's hobbies. And I really enjoyed seeing Wash try to navigate the uh, ship. And I enjoyed that entire mystery. Uh, that's the scariest thing that's happened so far in this campaign. And Wash pretty much said it. Um, you know, how did it slash inside the cabin and also underneath the ship? Doesn't make any sense. So I hope we find out what happened there. Uh, and uh, Uriah, I, like I'm waiting for the moment where like there's got to be, there's there's going to be something. I know it. Um, but I, I appreciated that Uriah uh, continues to to like keep me hooked and interested in I don't know why yet, but I, I'm excited about that. Uh, that's all for me. You can find me online if you want. I do some things, games and stuff uh, at Donathan Fry on the internet. But other than that, I'm just looking forward to the next game. Fabulous, fabulous. And of course, Bruit, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. Any 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 day where I get to game with you folks uh, is a is a beautiful day. Uh, this was a, another another fun filled one for sure. Um, way to just like lay a mystery at our feet and watch us scramble over each other trying to figure out how we're supposed to solve it. Um, I think probably my favorite part of today was um, because you have created so many unique NPCs, <laughs> both me and Greg, trying to mess with you <laughs> and switching back like back and forth like it's like Saturday Night Live, like scene change on crack. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I am I know I'm going to continue to do it, and I apologize oh, yeah. for that. No, just don't apologize. I, I did this to myself. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> of course, I and I'm, I'm just going to parrot what everyone else has said. The great thing about Call of Cthulhu is when the rolls go bad, man, it's just, you literally get to just watch it just tumble down the hill and fall apart. And, thankfully, our pilot, Johan, went a little bit Sully Sullenberger there at the end and saved our saved our cans. But, uh, but you we know, we got lucky. We got lucky, and that was our one. So, you know, can't wait for the next one. Like always, I I'm cool. You can find me on the internet. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, my favorite parts was um, y'all being like so nervous to get on this plane in the first place and they're like oh that was a really smooth landing yeah that was great and then not expecting the random scientist camping out in like the volcanic crater uh just being like i'm here because of global warming um because that was a big old thing in the 80s that was uh, i've done look i did way too much research into the global warmingness of the 1980s specifically and volcanoes and they're correlation to other things like earthquakes and, and they actually have been increasing in frequency all the facts she listed are true and not eldritch except for the weird magnet and electric EMP stuff but all the other facts there's your daily dose of science for today the more you know well, welcome to this episode of reading rainbow um sorry for all the horror not really um i also loved the the chat being like, who knew staying on the active volcanic island was the same choice? Uh, just the side chat is, is Ford, Tanner, and Wash, and Mateo um, just going out into the boat. Um, I had so I knew the boat that was going to happen to the boat. I didn't know if you guys were going to bite onto that hook, and I'm so glad you did. Um, and initiated it. You're like, hey, can we get someone from that boat to help carry our stuff? And I was like, yes. Give me a seventh person on this airplane. Let's go! <laughs> so I couldn't have been more tickled to uh, invent Mateo on the spot and uh, Tom's giggles every time he flipped his hair. Uh, just brought me so much joy. Uh, so thank you all. Yes, you can find me here. Laugh, love, Lindy. I play in NGM tabletop RPGs. Uh, and I'm so here to find out what happens through the rest. Y'all are, are, are gonna... Stuff's gonna happen real soon. You're well over halfway through. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, till next time, have fun and play games.